الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأطهر المرسلين شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم In the name of Allah the compassionate the most merciful All praise is due to Allah We bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah And we bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is indeed his final messenger The best of speech is the book of Allah And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم who would believe, my brothers and sisters, that a year is gone by? A year is gone by, subhanAllah. It went by so unbelievably fast. People say, I just got used to signing 2010 and now it's all of a sudden 2011. 365 days passed by so quickly, I did not even feel it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Qur'an, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ فِي السَّمَاءِ بُرُوجَ بعدها يقول, وَالَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَ لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورَ It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made the day and the night alternate. A beautiful sign of the signs of Allah. Neither the night surpasses the day nor the day surpasses the night. But rather what happens is that they're constantly alternating. And then Allah says, We made it in such a way for those who wish to remember. لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرْ أَوْ أَرَادَ شكورا, Or those who wish to be grateful. And subhanAllah, time passes by so quickly. Allah speaks about the importance of time in the Qur'an. وَالْفَجْرِ وَالضُّحَى وَالْلَيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَالْعَصْرِ all these five segments of our time, Allah swears by them in the Qur'an. By the early morning, by dawn, daytime, nighttime, by the afternoon, by the asr, Allah swears by it all the time. But time passes by so quickly nowadays. In the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that towards the end of time, Allah takes the barakah, the blessings away from time. And then he continues to say, the barakah will be stretched out of time so much so, that an entire year would feel as if it was a month. A month would pass by so quickly as if it was a week. A week would pass by so quickly as if it was a day. A day would pass by so quickly as if it was a moment. We come at the, at the end of the day, and you are just amazed, what happened to my today? People are amazed at how quickly the weekend is coming. You know, the weekend is over before I even felt it. The month is over, it's time to pay rent. And I didn't, I am not over the rent. 
I'm not over the rent from last month and it's already time to pay rent for this month. Time passes by so unbelievable quickly, subhanAllah. Said that Al-Fakhri Al-Razi was once walking in the market. When he heard a man saying, Ya ayyuha nas, ishtaru minni fa inna bida'ati al-waqt. He was begging people saying, Oh people, please buy from me, for I am selling time. And Imam Raz is thinking to himself, the man is a fool. How do you sell time? He said, I kept looking for the man and the closer I got, the harder and the more intense his plea, his plea became. Ya ayyuha nas, ishtaru minni, begging people, Ya, oh people, please buy from me. I am selling time. And he said, I really wanted to see how he sells time. He said, the closer I got, the louder he got. He said, then I got to him and the man was selling ice. The man was selling ice. So he said, every minute that passes by, he's losing money. He said, Wallahi, it was at this moment I understood what Allah meant when he said, Wal'asr in the insan lafi khusr. By the token of time, indeed, man is in loss. He said, that's wallahi when it hit me, and I understood what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant by this. You know, people speak about 2009 gone, 2010 gone, and now we are in 2011. Subhanallah, those who are immigrant amongst us, for me personally, I have been in the US for 23 years at this point. And I remember immigrants, when we first come to meet people, the first question that we like to ask was, how long have you been in the US? And people would say, I've been here for 15 years. And we would literally just hold on our heads, 15 years in the US, you've been here for 15 years? Can't believe that people have actually been here for 15 years. Wallahi, I remember so vividly the day I came to this place. 2000, Y2K, how people were talking about what would happen in the year 2000. Wallahi, this is happening. I'm remembering this as if it was last week. But that is actually 10 years. So my brothers and sisters, time is passing, subhanAllah. You know, it's no longer it's passing, it is just absolutely flying. People who were so young that we would teach in the Sunday school are now parents. People who were so young and now they're graduating. And you just remember them yesterday, they're in their elementary school and now they are in college and they're graduating. And you say, Subhanallah, how fast time is passing by. And that is why the Prophet speaks about this and he says, الناس. He said, two blessings, people undersell. You know, when you are in business, you're supposed to value the product that you have. And you're supposed to give it a price that matches the value of that product. You cannot sell something that is so valuable for so cheap. But then the Prophet ﷺ said, there are two blessings that people undersell. What is it, O Prophet of Allah? He said, as wal faragh He said, to be healthy and to actually have time on you. Have leisure time. Because subhanAllah, the time that passes by, we can never recall this. You know, time is not like our cell phone plan. It does not roll over. Because you have extra minutes that were not used last year, don't expect that they will carry over to the next year. Once you lose it, it is gone. And sometimes, subhanAllah, we don't appreciate time. So beautifully that it was once said, if you want to appreciate the value of a year, ask a student that failed and he is behind, that year means a lot to that student. If you want to value the, if you want to value a month, ask a mother who delivered a premature baby, five months, the baby was not fully complete, all she needed was just one month. So do not tell that mother that a month does not matter. That month means a lot to that mother. If you want to value a week, ask a person who is in charge of a newspaper or a magazine that comes out weekly. Every day to that person is a deadline. If you want to appreciate a day, 
Just tell the mother or the wife or the husband who are waiting for somebody to arrive tomorrow, but they can't wait because they're just so unbelievably happy about it. Subhanallah, you want to appreciate a minute? Ask a person that just missed their flight by a minute. You know how often that happens? You make it to the gate and they say, just missed it, man. You just missed it. You want to appreciate a second? Ask a person that just got off, out of an accident. Say, it was just a second ago, the car passed by. I just passed and the accident took place. A second means a lot. Subhanallah, if you want to appreciate a millisecond, ask a person that is in the Olympics. They lost gold because of a millisecond. So don't tell them that a millisecond does not matter. It does. So time, subhanallah, does matter. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran and it swears by time all over. We reminded about people pay attention to the Layl and Nahar. This phenomena, the alternation of the day and the night, that is just not, it's not just for play. Being reminded that there is extra room on this side of the, of the masjid, so inshallah you can, you can use that part of the masjid. So what happens my brothers and sisters is that we as believers appreciate time. We want to use time. We want to make the best use out of time. And subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would carry himself around and that he always had something to do. He was always, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was busy doing something good. So time is important, my brothers and sisters. We ought to take the time at the end of the year, at the end of the day, you know, for this idea of self-evaluation. How did my day go? How did this year pass by? What happened to me? What are my hopes for the future? Whatever amount of future Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits in my life. Subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the beginning of the day, he would start having good thoughts about the day. Subhanallah, he wakes up and immediately, you see the optimism in the eyes and in the words of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Allahumma inni as'aluka khayra hadha al-yawm, fathahu wa nasrahu wa nurahu wa barakatahu wa hudah. Sallu ala rasulillah. At the beginning of the day, he said, Oh Allah, today I ask you for the best that today has to offer. Oh Allah, I ask for the guidance of this day, the light of this day, the blessings of the day, the sustenance of the day, the khair, the barakah, the blessings in it. Oh Allah, I want to have a share of it. But see my brothers and sisters, we don't just hope for it, but we know that it's there. We ask Allah and now our job is to go out there and look for it. People wanting to kill time. Oh, you know what? I've got six hours. I don't know what to do with it. I'm going to just kill me six hours. Subhanallah, why would you do that? It was beautifully said by somebody. He said that, I wish I can go to the corner of the street and just take my heart off. And I'll ask the people, if you have an extra minute, please put it here. If you have an extra hour, please give it to me. I can do so much with it. But subhanallah, we cannot, we cannot do this. What do we want the time for, my brothers and sisters? What do we want it for? Sometimes we think of time as the amount alluded to us so that we can squeeze in more events in it. Squeeze in more events. In an hour, you can get this much accomplished in an hour. And mashallah, that is just maximizing on the time that is allowed to us. But subhanallah, sometimes we do this at a great expense. Great expense. They talk about it nowadays, they say that we human beings, our generation nowadays, we are the most impatient. We are very impatient. And I wanted to, you know, examine this with our youth group. And I said, we all hate waiting. What do you hate waiting for? I'm just asking these little kids. And some of them said, I hate it when I go to fast food and it does, you know, it takes a long time to get the food. How long does it take? It really doesn't take that long. Or oh, I hate it when I call somebody and the phone rings and rings and people don't pick up. We can't even wait that long. My favorite is when one kid said, I hate it when I'm on my computer and I wait for something to download. He said, I hate that. So we're becoming so impatient as a result of this. They opened a fast food restaurant in Italy. And one of the villagers came out and he said, what is this? 
said it's McDonald's, it's fast food. And he looked at it and he said, Subhanallah, since when is food supposed to be fast? So he opened a restaurant and he called it, slow down now. <laughs> Somebody picked up on the idea and they actually made a website out of it, slowdownnow.org. Said we human beings, subhanAllah, all the inventions that we made in the past few, you know, a hundred years ago, 75 years ago, were all time saving devices, airplanes, you know, trains, fast cars, fast computers, fast this, fast that. And we did it because we thought that we are saving time. We have a very important question to ask. Where is the time that we saved? We really did not save time. What we did is that we just rushed ourselves. And that is why it was so beautifully said, there is more into life than just increasing the speed of life. So when we speak about time, we're not talking about increasing the speed of life. We're not talking about rushing ourselves. We are talking about, look, an hour is all what you have. What would be the best usage of that hour? People look back at the year and they say, look man, I failed in this, I failed in that. I am hopeful about this next year. You know, people have a, you know, this ritual. At the beginning or the end of the year, people have New Year's resolution. You know, Islamically, there is really nothing wrong with having a New Year resolution. Even the Prophet ﷺ would say, you know, he made Hajj and he would say, Insha'Allah, if I make Hajj next year, this is what I will do. People who would became Muslims and they say, Insha'Allah, O Prophet of Allah, when I meet you, this is what I will do. Basically what it means is that we are making a commitment as to how we are going to spend this coming year. What are our hopes, aspirations and the desires for next year? And I was looking at the top 10 year resolution that you know, people have in the greater community out there. And the number one resolution that all people have is people wanting to lose weight and to get fit. Gym memberships at this time of the year, they skyrocket. Everybody is excited about, you know, I am going to hit the gym, I will lose weight and I will get fit. MashaAllah, that is really good. You know, comes then things such as stick to a budget, debt rejection, um, debt reduction, quit smoking, find a better job, find my soulmate, learn something new, volunteer and help others, get organized. Some people speak about quit drinking and so forth. And these are all good. But what about, inshallah, in this year, I plan to become a better person. How about this as a new year resolution? This year I plan to become a better person. This year I, build, I plan to become a happier person. This year I plan to become a better father. This year I plan to become a better mother, a better husband a better wife, maybe a better son or a better daughter. What about this as a resolution? This year, I plan to focus on my family. What about that as a, resolu as a resolution? This year, I plan to give more to my community. What about that as a resolution? This year, I plan to take more of an active role in my masjid. Young people who are here, what about this year, I plan to have better friends. How about this as a where we can say, looking ahead, I plan to better use my time. Or to do and to have better usage of my, of my time. That is an Islamic attitude to have with regard to what happens in time. And that is why time is not to be wasted. Time is not to be rushing ourselves during, but all it means is prioritizing so that we maximize the benefit of our time. You know, subhanAllah, there will always be something in your inbox. There will always be something in your inbox. So what do you have to do? We have to pick and choose. But brothers and sisters, if there is one hope that I would have, for all of us, for whatever time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us in the future, please let us think of the following, especially when it comes to our families. Quality is much better than style. It is much better to give our families 
equality rather than just a lifestyle. What good is it that we build all these and we buy all these lofty, big, beautiful houses, but we never take the time to make a home out of it? What good is it that we go and we work so hard to bring in the money, but we never have that time to enjoy our families with it? I was told of this book, subhanAllah, somebody wrote a book. He said that he was working so hard. And one day he was talking to his son, 17 by then. And the son said no to something and he said, Son, for the past 17 years, I did not even take a single day off to give you a good life. The son looked at him and he said, Dad, for the past 17 years, you were not available. So what good is it that we spend all this time working like that? Hey, but what about the time that we ought to spend with our family? What about the joy that you take as a father, as a mother, a husband and a wife? Subhanallah. That is why again the Prophet wasallam says, Don't be maghboon. Do not undersell. Do not undervalue this beautiful product that you have, which is leisure time. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الحمد لله إن شاء الله please move forward إن شاء الله to make room for those who are coming in and some of us can even إن شاء الله for the people who are in that room please move forward as well جزاكم الله خير الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسوله المصطفى my brothers and sisters, please remember that a Muslim is always optimistic, always hopeful in whatever time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us. You know, we meet it with such an attitude that insha'Allah it will be better. Insha'Allah it will be best. Especially in the times that we are in, optimism is very important. You know, people not having jobs, people losing their jobs, people afraid of losing their jobs, people are unable to, you know, budget here and there with all the financial difficulties that we have. A believer is always optimistic. The Prophet ﷺ would say, Al-fa'lu husnul khuluq, al khuluq. He would say, SubhanAllah, to be an optimist is the best of character, and to be a pessimist is the worst of character. So optimism is very important. So as inshallah this year is going to come again for however long Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to live in this life, let us just have a plan for next year. Inshallah this next year I am going to have a better relationship with Allah. I want to have a better relationship with Allah. What does that mean? I will not neglect my five daily prayers. You know, I was very heedless about my five daily prayers. I was not really taking good care of that. But from now on, inshallah, this coming year will be a different year for me. I will have a better relationship with my Creator. What good is life if we don't have a relationship with the one who made us, who gave us this life, expressing our gratitude and our appreciation? What good is it then? What good is it? making this hustling and the bustling, it is of no value if we do not have a good relationship with our Creator. Similarly, let us make this year a year where we will have better relationship with those who are around us. The people that you have not been talking to, the people that you have been neglecting, the family that you were not a part of, now you say, you know what, this year inshallah is going to be a beginning or a new beginning for us. But with optimism, with prioritizing, with planning, inshallah we can make this a much better year for all of us. Brothers and sisters, subhanallah, you know they say that kullu amin wa nahnu aqrabu ilallah. Says every year that passes by, we're just getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is not pessimism. Subhanallah, how beautiful it is getting closer to Allah. That is nice. You know that man that was not feeling well, he was very, very sick. So somebody came and he said, Kayfa tajiduk? He said, how are you doing? He said, Wallahi, Wallahi, ana bi khayri hal. He said, by Allah, I repeat by Allah, I am in the best of conditions. The man is about to die. They said, bi ahsani hal. You are in the best of conditions. He said, wa ma yadiruni. He says, Wallahi, law hayitu. 
كان الله معي وإني إن مت كنت مع الله. He said, if I live, Allah will be with me, and if I die, I will be with Allah. So he said, it's a win-win situation. So he said, I am in the best of conditions. Similarly, we say, كل عام ونحن أقرب إلى الله. Every year we are closer to Allah. But let's also make sure that every year we are closer in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please volunteer at your masjid. You know, some of these things that I read to you are good things. You know, if you feel that you need to become healthier, please make this a milestone. If you need to quit some of the bad habits, be it, you know, drinking, gambling, maybe we have a problem with porn. But whatever it is, let's just say, you know what, subhanAllah, inshaAllah, this is going to be a new year for us. And in the process, I'm going to ask the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for all the shortcomings in, in the past years, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who make better use of their time. Insha'Allah, may all the years in, or the days in our lives to come, may they be better than the ones that we spent, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma Ya Rabbi, innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Allahumma Ya Rabbi, farraj hamal mahmumeen. Wa nafiz karbal makrubeen. Waqd al-dayn anil madineen. اللهم يا رب اجعل خير أعمالنا خواتيمها وخير أيامنا يوما نلقاك اللهم توفنا وأنت راض عنا اللهم يا رب توفنا وأنت راض عنا اللهم يا رب توفنا وأنت راض عنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا رب اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة